Global warming continues to heat the Earth at an increasingly alarming pace. We may be approaching a point of no return. Some scientists have begun to suggest geoengineering the planet as a last resort to cool it down. Can we really cool the planet down just like that without side effects? Humans must reduce our carbon output and adopt green energy immediately. This is absolutely essential for our survival. But shouldn't we also consider backup plans in case we cannot achieve necessary CO2 reductions in time? One backup proposal is to cool the planet artificially by reflecting more sunlight back into space. The sun's energy comes to the planet as electromagnetic radiation. About 70% of this energy is absorbed by the Earth's surface, oceans, and atmosphere. This absorbed energy is emitted back as infrared radiation. However, carbon dioxide, or CO2, traps this infrared radiation, keeping it in the atmosphere. As more carbon enters the atmosphere, infrared radiation compounds, creating a greenhouse effect. Bright surfaces on Earth, such as snow, ice, clouds, and deserts, reflect about 29% of solar radiation back into space. If we could increase the amount of reflection, less energy would be trapped by carbon dioxide, effectively cooling the Earth. The 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, a Philippine volcano, gave scientists an idea of how to reflect more sunlight artificially. The massive eruption ejected about 15 million tons of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, the atmospheric layer that sits at an altitude of approximately 10 kilometers to 50 kilometers, or 6 to 30 miles. Reacting with water, the sulfur dioxide formed a hazy layer of aerosol particles composed primarily of sulfuric acid droplets. Over the next two years, stratospheric winds spread these particles around the globe. This reduced the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface by about 1%, which in turn cooled the planet by about 0.5 degrees Celsius over two years. So, maybe we could do this artificially. One approach is simply to fly specialized planes into the stratosphere, spraying aerosolized sulfate particles in large quantities year after year. These aerosols would then disperse around the globe, ultimately producing the same effect as a volcano. This could essentially buy us time to eliminate fossil fuels and develop other technologies to remove the CO2 currently in the atmosphere. Surprisingly, this comes at a relatively low price compared to the enormous cost of climate change, and we already have the technology to do this quite quickly. Other ideas to produce similar results include adding sea salt to clouds to increase their reflectivity, launching giant space mirrors, and releasing microbubbles into the oceans to make their surface more reflective. Yet, injecting the upper atmosphere with sulfate aerosols remains the most promising technique under current study. The National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, has what researchers call the world's most sophisticated Earth system model. This model will analyze hundreds of simulations of aerosol injection, testing the effects on extremes of weather patterns around the world. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, Cornell University, the University of Washington and Rutgers University have all received grants for real-world tests and research into these approaches. At Harvard University, climate scientists are experimenting with a high-altitude balloon to spray a fine mist of various candidate particles into the stratosphere. Sensors would then measure the particles' reflectivity, the degree to which they disperse or combine, and the way they interact with other compounds in the atmosphere. If you think these ideas seem a bit risky, you aren't alone. Some critics have called these concepts science fiction and say they are very dangerous. One obvious potential issue is that manipulating solar radiation could create massive changes in weather systems and rainfall patterns, which are largely driven by solar energy. This could create droughts, damage crops, and affect food supplies for billions of people. Global conflicts could arise among nations seeking to control this technology, given that the future of the world could be at stake. Critics also argue that merely suggesting or researching these methods could provide an excuse to continue to use fossil fuels, rather than working to reduce emissions, creating a moral hazard. By analogy, if technology could completely repair damage to the body, some people might continue to smoke or eat poorly. Additionally, atmospheric geoengineering wouldn't reduce the amount of atmospheric carbon or alter our current output of it. We would still need to use emission reduction and carbon capture technologies in combination or we'd have to keep this going indefinitely. In the end, geoengineering is clearly an approach of last resort, but given the dangerous rate at which we are warming the planet, we may not be able to reduce carbon emissions as much as needed. 
Ultimately, it's prudent to study geoengineering solutions and all other approaches to halt or stop climate change, so we are ready to take drastic measures if required. Like, follow, subscribe and catch us next time to see how you, plus science, can help save the world.